price, let's make let's say we sell them for like fifty dollars, and it's going to increase the sales account. When we do that, that's what we're doing right here. We're selling them. The sales tax is being generated, so it's going to be calculating the sales tax. So we'll allow that to add a little complexity. And let's say that we purchase them for thirty-five dollars. Let's say forty dollars. We purchase them for forty. So we buy them for forty. We sell them for fifty. All right. Let's save it and close it. And let's say we're going to have uh, let let's say just one. We'll just say one of. We'll sell one of these. So there's our thing that we're selling. <laughs> And uh, so, so then this is going to be a little bit more complex of a transaction similar to the invoice when we sold inventory because now we're tracking the inventory and we have the sales tax. So what's this going to do? It's going to be an increase not to accounts receivable like the invoice, but rather to some kind of cash account, this time undeposited funds because it's not going directly into the checking account because we have a cash payment. So we want to take it in and out of the clearing account. That's going to be for the 54. The other side then is going to be going to the income account, but only for the $50, the amount that we charge, the difference $4, the tax is going to be going to a liability account. And then we're going to also have a decrease to the inventory of, I think, $40, which isn't on the sales receipt, but it's known because the item is telling the system that and cost of goods sold is going to be going up by $40 the net impact on net income being the $50 minus the $40 or $10. And you can have the inventory tracking for the item that has been set up on a sub ledger tracking by item. So it can actually be a fairly complex uh, transaction. Now you might also ask, why don't I record the revenue at $54? instead of a liability of the sales tax. And then when I pay the sales tax, it would be an expense of doing business. That would kind of make sense. The idea is that the tax is imposed on the customer, not on you, the business, even though they're, they're just making you the tax collector. So it's not income to you. The idea is it's gonna be off the income statement on the balance sheet, increase in the liability, and then you decrease the liability. Again, your client, a client, if you're a bookkeeper might ask you, why don't I have a sales tax expense as a deduction when I'm doing my taxes? I pay a lot for sales taxes. I should have an expense for it. And the reason is because you, if you do it this way, the income of the sales tax also didn't go on the income statement. Both of them are on the balance sheet. Okay, let's let let's record it over here just to check it out this way. If I did if I did it this way, let's just modify this one. I'm going to say, okay, so now we had what's going to happen here. Well, cash is going. Now it's not cash, but I'll put it into cash. It's really going into undeposited funds, but cash. And then we have the sales. And then it was for $50. And then sales tax, sales tax payable is going to be equal to the 50 times 0.08. I think it was 8% a negative sum of that. So that means we're getting $54 and then the inventory is going down and cost of goods sold is going up for $40. And so cash is gonna be going up, although it's gonna go into undeposited funds in our practice problem. I'll just, you know, we'll have a different step, but then we're gonna say then the income down here is going to go into income and sales tax payables up here on the balance sheet sales tax payable and then we're going to have the cost of goods sold is going to go up and inventory is going to go down nothing's currently in inventory so i get a negative inventory impact on net income the 50 dollars sales price minus the 40 dollars and then we owe the sales tax uh in the future all right so let's check it out save it and close it and check that one out so i'm going to go to the balance sheet and run it to refresh it and we'll say that this time we put it into undeposited funds undeposited funds goes up by the full amount 54 dollars scrolling down there's the 54 dollars movie b to the n b n closing this out back going to the income statement running it to refreshing it and we can see there's the $50 in the sales, not including the 
not including the sales tax. And then let's go back on over, find the sales tax. Where did that go? It went into the liability on, over here to the board of equalization, because that's who we owe the sales tax to. There's the $4 on that one. Let's go back. And then we know that the uh, inventory is going down. Let's go into the inventory. We have a decrease of the $40. That $40 is not on the actual sales receipt, but is known by the item because if the item set up, we said it was $40 for the cost. Closing that back out, back to the balance sheet. The other side's on the income statement. Cost of goods sold, $40. Net impact on the income statement, 50 minus 40, $10. Let's go back uh, to the balance sheet and look at that inventory, which now would need to be tracked on a perpetual inventory method if that's what we're using. Remembering every time you deal with inventory, you have to ask how you don't have to do it this way, a perpetual inventory method. You might be tracking it outside of QuickBooks using a periodic inventory system within QuickBooks, possibly tracking it on your Shopify store, or Amazon, if you're doing that kind of thing, or in a spreadsheet. But we're doing the full service perpetual system here. Therefore, we have a sub ledger. Let's right click on the tab to the right, duplicate it so that we can look at our sub ledger. Let's go to the reports down below and type in inventory valuation summary. Closing up the ham boogie, changing the range up top from 01. Let's let's go to 12.31.24. Run it to refresh it. Now, when we put the item on the books, we said there were 10 of them. So that means QuickBooks did a journal entry to record 10 items at the date we said we, we purchased them or put them on the books. And then we sold one of them, resulting in nine remaining. So this is the inventory items. There's the 956.25 of all the inventory. We